Can you see it? There's so much great found in the small. A full life of potential in a heartbeat. A massive tree in an acorn. Trillions of atoms in a speck of dust. So much said in a look. So much history in a scar. So much comfort in silence. The faith to move mountains in a seed. The greatest gift in pennies. A timeless sacrifice in a few breaths. The greatest of man in a servant. The universe is great in the small. Stars 1,000 times the size of Earth, just specks in the sky. Salvation in the simplest of prayers. The gift of eternity in an instant. Freedom from bondage in a choice. Fullness of life in the darkest of times. Power of resurrection in a word. The greatest significance in the smallest of steps. Can you see it? May we all come to see the great in the small. Amen, amen. Good morning, good morning. Let us put some activity in our bodies this morning as we invite the Holy Spirit to be in this place this morning, to embed himself into these walls, into our technology, into our electricity, into our pews, into our hearts, into our minds, into our voices, that we can give God praise this morning. We pray that he enables us to do that because he knows exactly what God desires at this very moment. We welcome you. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship and praise him. So for those that are in person, we thank you. For those that are on Zoom, we thank you. And for those who will see this recording on YouTube through our website, we thank you and we welcome you this morning. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent. We thank you again for coming. We want to uh, first welcome our visitors and guests, but we want to give a special welcome this morning to any of our William and Mary students. Could you stand first? Any William and Mary students that are here? Amen. Thank you. Now stay standing because we're going to ask other guests and visitors to join you in standing up this morning so that we can give you a good hearty welcome. Amen. Any other visitors or guests this morning? Thank you so much. You may be seated. Thank you for being here today. We do not take that for granted. We do not take it lightly because we are a people of choice. We can choose to be here or there. We can choose to do this or that, and we can choose not to do. We thank you that you chose to join with us today. We also uh, say we're going to celebrate and continue to give God glory for all of the birthdays and anniversaries that we experience. We thank God for another day and another year. And I think understanding our times, a lot of people now are not, um, let's say, uh, uh, afraid to reveal their age <laughs> because they're just thankful for another day to be in their right mind. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know that's what my wife said. She said, I don't mind telling. I'll shout it from the rooftop. To say how good God is and how he's kept us each and every day. Now, I'm not going to ask you to say your age, but hallelujah, as you become um, free in that area, just celebrate, amen, from the rooftops. We uh, also want to continue to remember our pastor and, of course, his family while he's traveling and sharing and serving. Just know that our pastor is about, is about the Lord's business, amen? Hallelujah, and I'm so thankful and grateful 
that he feels free to be able to go and do that, knowing that all is well at home. Amen. Amen. Let us go before the Lord in prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you. We give you glory and honor for such a time as this. We thank you for preparing us, Lord God, for this day to do what it is you would have us to do, to share what you would have us to share, to bless those that you have listened to their cries and their prayers in the midnight hour to bless them. You do it through your people. You do it through the circumstances. You do it through your word. And we give you glory and honor for that. We thank you that you brought us together in person and on Zoom to do your will, to do the work of your hands. And Lord God, we continue to lift up those right now those who have lost loved ones, those that are sick and shut in. Touch the hearts and minds of those who are suffering physically, emotionally, mentally. Bless the doctors that whose care they're in. Bless the caregivers that are giving care. Strengthen and guide them. Guide their hand in the name of Jesus. We need you in every area of our lives. Lord God, and there are names that have been uh, put forth and called forth on this prayer list. And so, Lord, I just wanted to to, to echo those. Lord, we, right now we lift up Minister Williamson and family at the passing of her mother, Mrs. Mildred Stone. Lord, we lift up Brother Nat Brown's brother, William Brown. Lord, we lift up Sister Barbara Bell, Brother Sled and family. We lift up Reverend James Walker and Sister Sheila Bartlett. We lift up Brother and Sister Prater, Brother Jimmy Jordan. We lift up Brother Wesley Kearney and Sister Myrtle Gordon. We lift up, lift up Sister Antonia Gardner, Minister Willie Mae Howard. We lift up Brother Johnny Brown and Sus Sister Jane Harris. We lift up Brother Fox and his family. We lift up the children that are being admitted to the hospital in record numbers now, Lord God, for some new thing that's overtaken them or trying to. Lord, we lift those that are in long COVID conditions. Lord, we lift up Sister Gloria Runyon. We lift up Pastor Davis and his family and mother. We lift up Sister Linda Howard, Lord God. We lift up youth and young adults, God. We ask that your spirit will be over them, will be over and within our schools, over our students, the teachers, the faculty, and administration. Lord, we know that we can do nothing without you, and we need you each and every day, each and every hour. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your spirit. Let us receive now what you have in store for us. Let us receive the word that will come forth. Lord, through every facet of our service this morning, opening music, scripture, prayer, tithes and offerings, Lord God, and of course, the spoken preached word. And Lord, let us respond to what it is you're doing in our hearts this morning. Bless the man of the hour. Bless the one that will come and break forth the bread of life. Let him do so, Lord God, with power and strength that we would be changed. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Thank you so much for joining in with me in that prayer. We're going to have our opening selection, and we just hope that you would just sing with all the gusto God has given you with mask on, amen. Then I will read scripture for you this morning, and then we will have our morning prayer by Deacon Robert Holmes, amen. Come on now. Yeah. 
seems like a real simple concept, doesn't it? But we need to be reminded as grown folk that Jesus loves me, that he loves you. He loves us. We forget that sometimes with the pressure of time, with the pressure of things going on. I'm so grateful that they're reminding us of that. And I know we tend to think that's a children's song. That's a heart song. That's a, I can go a little bit further song. Oh yeah, all about you. I needed that word last week to carry me from Monday through today that I can go a little bit further because Jesus loves me. That's why we can go a little further knowing that. Amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you for that reminder. Grown folk need to be reminded. Amen, and we thank you. And a little child shall lead them. Amen. I will be reading until you're hearing, and as you get it, you please stand if you can. Psalm 91. Psalm 91, a psalm of, of safety and care, and we need safety in these days and these times. Amen. Everywhere, no place is safe now from violence and danger. No place. No place. Hallelujah. Psalm 91, reading from the New King James Version. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes will you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest your, you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. The reading of the word of God, Psalm 91. Amen. You may be seated as Deacon Home comes. Good morning, saints. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father and our God, before we ask you anything, Lord, we'd like to first thank you for allowing us to see this new day. Thank you, Lord, because you've been good to us and we've been to ourselves. Thank you, Lord, because you look at our heart they judge us. And we get caught up looking at the outside to see whether people are fit to do your will. And we thank you that you have mercy, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for our children. Because just like the, just like the preacher said, Lord, oh, we need to know that you still love us as well. And no song is too long or too difficult when it is about praising your name and recognizing how good you are to us. Oh, Lord God, you know that we are bothered and we allow the worry of this world to be able to have a little talk with you, Lord. And but we thank you, Lord, because you know what's on our hearts, Lord, and you can tell us, let your heart not be troubled, because you, you know what's in our hearts, Lord. And for that, Lord, we ask in that this hour, Lord, because we're only living this hour because of your grace and your mercy. So we ask, oh, Lord God, at this hour that you would just 
Pour out your anointing upon your people, Lord God. Because, Lord, you said in your word, when praise goes up, blessing come down, Lord. And, Lord, I can't speak but nobody else, but I am a witness that you prove to your word. So, Lord, send your anointing here. Remove self, Lord, that we will allow your spirit to lead and guide us to worship you, Lord God. And, Lord God, everything that is said and done at this hour, we pray that it would be pleasing in your sight, Lord God, and that everything that is said and done this hour, that we would be able to go forth a little while longer and doing your will. Continue to bless the branch of Zion called First Baptist Church. Bless the leader, bless the shepherd which you have placed here, Lord God, that we all may work in unity to fulfill your will that you have in store for us all. Have your way, Lord, throughout this worship experience. And in order for that to happen, Lord, help us to surrender ourselves to you for guidance, Lord. For, Lord, we can do nothing without you. We thank you. We thank you for allowing us to be here. And we thank you, Lord, for what you're going to have in store for us when we remain obedient until you. Have your way and may everything that is said and done at this hour be pleasing in thy sight. For it is in your son, Jesus Christ, I ask it and I claim it to be done. And the people of God say, amen, amen. We thank you again for being a, an active participant in our worship experience this morning. Amen. That is what's required, responding to what our heart has heard and experienced and felt from the Lord in each and every activity that goes forth here. We thank you so much for that. Thank you uh, for Deacon Holmes for that prayer and for our, our children, our youth in their song. We thank you for that. Amen. 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 So at this time, we would ask that you would prepare your, your hearts and minds for giving bringing all things that into the storehouse. And I, and I look at it this way, and I, I do this at work. I try to deposit in other people so that when I have need, I can go and have something to withdraw. Amen. I, I, I really do that. So I'm going to tell you, that's what being nice to people is about, being kind and generous and gentle and forgiving and loving, because there's going to come a time when we have need and we have a place to go. And sometimes it's people that you don't even know you've touched by what you do. And they will come and let you know and give you that. Amen. So give out of the abundance of your hearts. Amen. This morning. Ushers, it is in your hands. Us bow in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for 
how we have responded to your call to give out of the abundance of our hearts. Give, Lord God, as you have purpose in our hearts to do. Even for those that were not able to give financially, Lord God, they're giving of their heart right now. They're giving of their time. They're giving of their thoughts. They're giving of the spirit right now. We pray, Lord God, that we're able to continue to press in to the Holy Spirit this morning, to hear what you desire us to hear, to see what you desire us to see, and know what you desire us to know. Thank you for this offering. May it be used for the building up of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say amen, amen, amen. All right. We will have another selection by our, our youth, our young adults, and then hear the breaking of bread of life, the morning message from Reverend Dr. Alvin Thomas. Hear ye him. when I was nine or 10 years old, singing in First Baptist in Vienna, Junior Choir. And looking back, I had no idea what God had in store for me. I was a Sunday school teacher at 13, baptized at 13, was a deacon, and then God called me. And I pastored, and then I went back to my home church and became the assistant pastor. And I retired again in 2019. We never know, look at these young people, 
what God has in store for them. And let's give them a hand. My mom always wanted me to be a pastor. She even dressed me like a little pastor, little hat. Praise God. First, give honor to God, to Pastor Davis in his absence, to our First Lady Davis, my fellow clergy, deacons, deaconess, and the First Baptist family, and those on Zoom and our guests. Amen. I also want to recognize and thank Reverend Bell for an outstanding worship this morning. Worship leader. My wife, Valerie, could not be here this morning. Uh, she wasn't feeling well. And I thank each of you for your prayers. I also acknowledge, and every time I preach, I do this, standing behind this sacred desk, I do not take for granted. And I thank Pastor Davis for giving me this opportunity. This morning's message is coming from the New Testament, Acts chapter 7, verses 51 through 60. And if you can stand, please stand. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And the Somalia will concentrate on verses 55, 56, and 58. And I pray that the sermon will provide encouragement and confidence for you as you go through your crisis situations. Scripture reads as follows. You stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did. So do you which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who foretold the coming of the just one of whom you now have become the betrayers and murderers who have received the law by the direction of angels and have not kept when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gashed at him with their teeth. But he being full of the Holy Spirit, I say again, but he, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God and said, look, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice, stopped their ears and ran at him with one accord. We hear that one accord, even enemies can be in one accord. And they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. And they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Amen, amen, and amen. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, is again that we come to get bold to your throne. Father, touch those who are hurting, touch the sick, those waiting surgery. Strengthen each of us, your people, Father, those struggling, grieving, and those that just need your tenderness and your presence, Father. We lift up our shepherd, his family, and the leadership of First Baptist, Lord God. Bless each one assembled and on the Zoom. Holy Spirit, help each of us as we go through our life experiences, as we go through trials and tribulation. Now, Holy Spirit, hide me behind the cross, and only Jesus is seen. Take me out of self, anoint me, Father, enable me, authenticate me, and let me proclaim your word textually with clarity, with boldness, with confidence, and not with arrogance. Holy Spirit, anoint all ears to hear, but thus saith the Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen, amen, and amen. The title of this morning's sermon is Going Through Death Valley Experiences, But Not Alone. But Not Alone. So saints, it gives me great pleasure in times like these to go into the scripture and see the eternal goodness of God. The text we are sharing this morning was written and inspired by the Holy Spirit many centuries ago and by this, I know that God didn't just start being good yesterday. 
but God has always been good, and you and I have a right to expect the same goodness from God today. Amen? Yes, these times are challenging. Grocery prices rising, racial tension increasing, threats on our democracy, seesaw gas prices, job losses, rising inflation, impact in our pockets. On top of all this, we go through Death Valley experiences. Have it like Stephen, you are not alone and you're not, and you've got to know the Lord and call upon his name, amen? You may ask preacher, what is a Death Valley experience? Church, I am suggesting that a Death Valley experience is any experience that causes you to be at the end of your ropes and you don't see a way out. Or it's one where you don't know how you're going to put food on the table or when you don't know how you're going to pay the rent or mortgage or when you dread going to the doctor because you fear the worst is results or you have to rob Peter to pay Paul to pay a prior to bill, amen? Help us, Jesus. Church, have you been there? But God, but God. Yes, God is our reference and strength, a, present, a very present help in trouble. Church, I can imagine by giving an opportunity, each of you can go up this morning, come here and stand forth and give your testimony, amen? amen. As we go through, we do indeed need to face things and call on Jesus. Nevertheless, my love, beloved, I know you and I continue to praise him, even though we may be going through. I can start this morning because I'm excited and I'm encouraged in my spirit because there is a word from God and because, and because God is so awesome. Not only is he good, he is faithful, he is merciful, and he is just. Do you feel like praising him this morning? Let's give him a hand. Now, church, I hear, I'm here this morning to ignite your faith and to ignite your trust in him. Yes, I know we are about to go into the 11th month, and 2022 is almost over. Nevertheless, saints, God still has a plan for you. Amen? Amen. Yes, there have been drastic changes in your circumstances. And though it might appear that all hope is lost, it ain't over. I know to say it ain't over is not very good English, but I want to get someone's attention. Yes, you might be want to quit due to the various situations and trials facing your life. However, however, God has a blessing for you that if you don't quit, you will see his promises soon. Amen? Let's give God a hand. Jeremiah 29, 11, B, reminds us from Eugene Pearson's message Bible, says quickly and very quietly, I have it all planned out for you. Plans to take care of you, not to abandon you. Plans to give you the future you hope for. Amen? That's the word for someone this morning. And as we look at the text this morning, we know that, that no matter what you're going through, we may be going through a Death Valley experience. The first thing is to examine your own heart. Sometimes hardships are brought on by foolish decisions. Or that was the will of God. That is called chastisement. And we need to know that God will use whatever methods he must to get your and my attention. Because why? Because he loves us. And yes, sometimes hardships come because we are living for the Lord. God sometimes allows suffering in our lives for his own purposes. God does this to grow us. In James 1, verses 2 to 3, reminds us, brethren and sisters, can it all joy when you fall into various trials? Know that the testing of your faith produces patience. Saints, cold winds come. Take some time to examine your heart. Be aware how you're living. Focus on Jesus and not your problem. As we look at the word for this morning, and there are several propositions that God gives us. And I want to share those propositions just quickly. Proposition one, you must be aware of how you're living. And that is always focus on Jesus. And that's verse 55. Proposition two, you must be aware of how he, you're living. 
Are you, le are you led by the glory of God? And lastly, you must be aware of how, of what relationships you are in, in verses 55, 56, 58. And as I just shared a few minutes ago about uh, Stephen, I want to go over a couple of things here real fast. The text makes clear that there was a vast difference between Stephen and his attackers. Stephen had preached to the Jewish leaders and they resisted the Holy Spirit. His main point was that their religion was self-worship. That is worship of things that pleased them. Today, they would be worshiping houses, worshiping our cars, worshiping our jobs, our children, our success, not God worship, amen? And they are attacking him. Steve was having a Death Valley experience, but his, but his attention focused on the Lord. Do you hear, saints? As Stephen was going through, he was not focusing on his problems, his situation, but Jesus. And verse 55 draws our attention to the difference between Stephen and his attackers by simply saying, but he. Verses 55 continues that he was full of the Holy Spirit. Church, sometimes we want to have just a but, but, but he experience i.e. focusing on God. Yes, Steve was different from the evil people around him, and it showed in his life. His testimony was the love of Jesus. Since the text is telling you to focus on Jesus and your death valley experience, and don't have a death valley experience all by yourself, because you are not alone. Amen? Amen. Additionally, as we think about our trials and tribulation. And I want to go to verse 2 of uh, Proposition 2. You must be aware of who is leading you. Verse 55 tells us that Stephen was full of the Holy Spirit, which means, according to John, uh, John 12, 46b, he was not abiding in darkness. And John 16, 14 indicates that the Holy Spirit will glorify Jesus, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. What does that mean? That means, essentially, when you look at not your problem, look at the Holy Spirit, because each of us who accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior has the Holy Spirit living in us. And sometimes we need to, I know Pastor talked about having a private, private place to go pray. Sometimes we just need to go and bow our knees and just say, Lord Jesus, help me. Just help me. And, and, and I, I can assure you that sometimes if you just, just say Jesus, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, and everything all of a sudden seems to be peaceful. And, and you know that the problem is still there, but you are at peace. You can relax. Amen? And that's what it's saying here. And Stephen was exactly where God wanted him to be. He was not led by things or people who have no desire to know him. God led Stephen to a clever, very place at that very moment. And God knew who he was. He was not alone. God got the glory from Stephen's horrible death. That means, church, when we allow the Holy Spirit to be in our control of our lives, we glorify God. Saints, when the Holy Spirit controls our lives, we can have peace in the presence of chaos. Saying the scripture is powerful when you're going through difficulties. And 2 Corinthians 3.17 reminds us, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Peace. There is liberty. So church, Stephen uh, uh, arrived where he did because he was following the leadership of the Holy Spirit. He was at peace. Let me say again, the Holy Spirit leads us and will guide us and will give us peace and relaxation. And when you can lean on him and not on your problem, not, and God knows right now, some of us may be going through. I don't know, but he knows. Amen. And I'm going to say something a few minutes, a bit, in, a, in a few minutes, about Stephen's light. And I know what, what many years ago when I was uh, studying to be a deacon, and I had to go to the scriptures and read about Stephen and Stephen's light and how he was impacted. You know, and, and, and that this touched me as a youngster. I was 27 when I became a deacon. I call that youngster. I'm still a youngster. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. 
And uh, so the point I just want to make is that sometimes we just need to just relax in God. No matter how difficult the problem might be, just relax. And lastly, I want to share this. Look at the text. There is Stephen. His enemies are biting his body and are going, are stoning him to death. He knows he would never see his friends. He knows he would never see his loved ones. He knows he would never minister. He knows he would never preach again. He knows he would never be used again by the Holy Spirit to create miracles. He knows that his earthly life is over. Have a note. He is not telling his haters, the crowd, such things as, please forgive me, crowd. I want to be like you. I will be and do as you desire. But look what he does. What is he doing? He is not looking at his problem. He is looking at his savior. He is concentrating on Jesus. He knows that they are going to abuse him. He knows that they hate him. But praise God, he knows he will be in the presence of the Lord soon. And church of Texas teaching us, you and I, through Stephen, a valuable lesson. I said this earlier, you could either spend time focused on your problem of life, or you could spend time focused on who? The problem solver. Saints, look at verse 58. While they were stoning him, he was praying. Stephen said, Lord Jesus, Receive my spirit. Do not charge them with the sin. Yes, he was praying. Church, we serve a powerful God. And he will not leave you while you're going through your death valley experience. Focus on Jesus. Yes, you can look at what is wrong, or you can look at one who can make it right. He can be Jehovah Rapha, God my healer. He can be Jehovah Jireh, God my provider. He can be Jehovah Shaddai. God, your provider. He can be what you need him to be at that moment. And by the way, church, Stephen saw Jesus standing, not sitting, standing at God's right hand. Hebrews 10, 12b and 12, and 12, 2b tells us that Jesus ascended to heaven and sat where? On the right hand side. He sat on the right hand side of God's throne, not standing. Saints, if you allow me, I believe Jesus is standing because Jesus, the King of Kings, sees the suffering of his man, and he stands to show his concern for the hardship Stephen faces. And church, I believe Jesus stands to honor the man who has worshipped him and has honored him. I believe Jesus stands to welcome the first Christian martyr into heaven. I believe Jesus stands because Stephen has stood for him. Church, are you ashamed to stand for Jesus? Church, are we serving God every opportunity we're given? Are we serving God? Are we serving God here at First Baptist? Yes, Lord God. I, and remember this. I don't know if Jesus will be standing as you and I go through our death valley experiences. However, this I know, that one day, this life will be over for you and I, and we will go into the presence of the Lord. Saints, I don't expect him to stand when we meet him, however, I expect us to bow down, yes, bow down before him and give him worship. Charles Gabriel, a Methodist hymn writer, wrote a hymn based on 1 John 3, 2. The hymn is titled, Oh, That Will Be a Glory to Me. It reads, the first line reads, when all my labors and trials are over and I am safe on that beautiful shore, oh, that will be glory to me when by his grace, I should look at his face. And that continues. I stand amazed in his presence and wonder, how could he love me? Isn't that something? Church, Jesus loves us without exception. Beloved, we want him to say, well done, good and faithful servant. That is what Jesus standing communicates to Stephen. Jesus is saying, well done, Stephen. It's time to come home. Amen. When you and I enter our death valley experiences, remember the truth from Isaiah 41, 10 a. Fear not, fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am your thy God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. 
Yes, allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, lead you as you go through your death valley experiences. Yes. In closing, saints, trust in the Lord. He's your strength in time of trouble. Whatever your situation, be encouraged. You are in the hands of a good God. For Jesus volunteered to come down from heaven to become a sacrifice for you and I. He did not come down from the cross. Yes, he died for all of our sins. It does not matter how mighty the issue, you are covered by his blood. And because he got up from the grave, all power in his hands on that Sunday morning. At this moment, he sits at the Father's right hand and eating, seated, interceding for each of us. I don't care what I'm going through or what you're going through. He knows what you're going through. And I like what it says over in, in, uh, in Romans. It says that sometimes we don't know even what to pray for. You can be in your home and you just, you, you're hurting. And you can say, oh, but oh, it's interpreted. It's interpreted by the Holy Spirit. And the word says that God and the Holy Spirit come together. And Jesus was sitting at the right hand. And they want to intercede on your behalf. So he's interceding, but he's not by himself. Amen? And just remember that I don't care what you're going through. Yes, he died for our sins. But praise God, we can remember that as we go through our death valley experiences, we are not alone. Amen? We are not alone. Praise God. You know, this morning, I'm going to open the doors of the church on behalf of our pastor. Sometimes uh, we don't know, as I said before, what we're going through. As the deacons come forward, the church doors are open. And perhaps you're struggling. You might be struggling because you're going through a trials and tribulations. Or you may, know, you may not know Jesus as your King of Kings. But you need just a touch this morning. You, you realize that you, can, you cannot handle this by yourself. And you've got to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Or you might be at, know Jesus, be out of fellowship. The doors are open as well. Or you may have moved to the area. And this is a loving place for you to call your home. So please come. So please think it through. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you have to go to someone else, pray for me. But well, you can pray yourself. And as I say, once you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit is living in you. So this morning, please come. Always remember, tomorrow is not promised. Tomorrow is not promised. As the choir sings, please think it through. Please come. I'm going to sing is I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided we have made that decision to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus.
again, I thank Pastor Davis for giving this opportunity to preach the word. And we please stand for the benediction. Father, we thank you for the word this morning. We thank you, Lord God, for each one assembled, Father. Lord, touch those who are on Zoom and those of us, Lord God, who are going through, Father. Now, God, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of us forevermore. And the body of Christ says, amen, amen, and amen. Praise God. Go in peace and enjoy this wonderful day.